Welcome everybody. This is day two of my endeavor to rebuild this World War II vehicle in Fusion 360. So like I've stated in the previous video, I'm a complete beginner when it comes to Fusion 360. So I'm not only gonna share the design process and hopefully I will reach the level where I am able to design the thing uh, in the first place, but I'm also going to share the entire learning progress I go through in Fusion 360. At the same time, I would like to encourage you to uh, leave comments below the videos to share your tips and your tricks in case you are already an experienced Fusion 360 user. So the topic of today's video is the interface. Let's get started. Now, the interface is basically divided or separated into three main parts. We have our uh, canvas or the 3D view in the middle. So that's the big blank area. Then we have a toolbar at the top where all the tools are located and an additional toolbar or an additional bar at the bottom. So this one is the parametric design history. I'm gonna talk about this later. And when you look at the toolbar at the top, it's very tidy. It almost looks a little bit like we only have a handful of tools available, but this is because everything is nested and organized in different environments. I'm currently in the design environment, but there is a render environment, an animation environment, a manufacturer environment. And if you click or if you activate one of these uh, environments, you can see that I have a different set of tools available. So let me quickly switch back to the design environment. And this one is also um, separated or divided into different tabs. So I'm currently in the solid tab. I have a surface tab here, a sheet metal tab and a tool tab. And below the quick access to several tools, there's a drop down menu that allows us to access all of the tools that are available in the corresponding environment. When you hover over an icon and keep the mouse on this position, uh, you get prompted with a little box where the function of this feature gets explained, sometimes also with a, a screenshot to make things more clear. And this is very helpful, especially at the beginning when you do not know what the uh, function is good for. Now let's take a look at the icons in the top right corner. As you can see, I currently have a design opened. It's unsaved. I can tell this by the little asterisk behind the title. And if I click on the plus sign next to it, I open up a new design. I can close it by hitting the little X key. So next to the new design icon, there is the extension icon that opens up a window where I can purchase uh, extensions for different environments. So for instance, I can acquire um, new or different features for the manufacturer environment. And this is also where the cloud credits come into play. I will probably not need any of these extensions to start designing. So I'm going to close this. Um, next to it, we have the job status. It tells me that I'm currently working online. If I turn this one off, I switch to the offline mode and you can still uh, proceed uh, creating in offline mode, but you were probably not able to save any of your files into the cloud. So I switch to the online mode again. Uh, at the top here, we can view our job status. So when I click on it, I can see if any simulations are running in the cloud. Next to uh, job status, there is the help section with learning and documentations. And when you click uh, on these menus here in the drop down menu, you get redirected to the Autodesk website most of the time. And at the very right uh, are your account settings. And this is very important because here are the Fusion 360 preferences located. So if I click on preferences, the preference window shows up and this one is located under the account settings because when you work on a different workstation, when you open up Fusion 360 and sign in with your credentials, it will automatically download or give you access to your preferences and your settings. So this means you can work on your personal Fusion 360 version on different workstations uh, when you log in. Uh, this goes for all the settings in the preferences and also the shortcut keys. 
Now let's move on to file handling in Fusion 360. Mm, this one works a little bit different than I was normally used to and it took me uh, some time to understand what the uh, best practice here is. So if you click on the uh, data panel icon in the top left corner, you get access to your project. And at the moment, when I click on uh, my recent data, this list is empty because I haven't uh, saved any files yet. So let me quickly draw a box so that we have something we can save. I'll give it some thickness. I'm going to talk about all of the settings and how to create these in a future video. But for now, I simply click on save and then I get prompted with this window where I can pick a location on the cloud. And basically there are two projects already created for me, the admin project and the default project. And I'm going to save my box inside the default project. Here you have the option to create a new folder. So this one is called my um, box test folder. And when I double click on it, I can save our test box inside this folder by uh, clicking save. Now, when I double click on my recent data again, I should get prompted with a little preview of the box. Here it is. And when I go back to the default projects and double click on this one, I have my box test folder in it. And when I open up the folder, I have access to my test box again. Now, when you work on a new design that consists of several different parts, it probably makes sense to create an entirely new project. So go to the data panel, click on new project and name it. Uh, this is my uh, box project. And when you double click on the box project container, you can again create a new folder inside it. So that's my test box. And when I double click this folder, it's of course empty again. And now I can go to file and save the current document inside this newly created project. That's the box project with the test box folder in it. And I can simply save it as my test box inside this new project. When you look at the file, you will see a little icon in the bottom right corner. And this one tells me that I'm currently working on version number one of the box. So if I click on it, I get some additional information about the object or the file. So who was creating it, who is using it right now, when was the last update. And when I now do some changes on the box, so for instance, I uh, quickly offset this surface like so and click on OK and then click on Save again. I can save it as, uh, let's say, uh, Surface Offset and click on OK. And then it takes a second to upload the new version into the cloud. And then you will see that I am now working on version number two. So Fusion uh, incrementally saves all of the different versions inside the cloud. And uh, this allows me to go back to a previous version in case uh, something went wrong with the current design. So now I was wondering what might happen when I lose my internet connection or when I turn Fusion 360 into the offline mode. Am I still able to save my files? And the answer to this question is yes. And this is possible because uh, Fusion does not only store my projects into the cloud, but it also saves a copy of them on my local machine. And you can find the files on a Windows operating system under C, Users, then whatever your computer name is, App Data, Local, Autodesk, Autodesk Fusion 360. Then here comes a pretty long account number and inside this folder is a w.login folder that contains all of the files. Now, when you go online again, Fusion 360 simply uploads and updates the files in the cloud with the one that you have stored on your local machine in the meantime.
You can even adjust the time frame Fusion uses to store these files locally. And this can be done on the preferences. And I have noticed that it always takes a second or two to come up with the preference window. And um, this is maybe because it has to sync the settings with the cloud. Anyway, here you can change the offline cache time period to something else in 15 days in case you want to save some storage space. At the same time, another question came up and this one was, am I able to store my designs locally myself? And the answer to this question is yes. So as you know, whenever you hit the save button, Fusion sends your design into the cloud and at the same time it stores uh, a backup into the cache folder. But you can still save your designs manually on your workstation and you can do this by going up to file export and here you can choose a local location and save it as an Autodesk Fusion 360 file or you can also of course export it as an IGS or as an OBJ for instance. The same also works the other way around. You can not only export files and store them locally on your workstation but you can also uh, upload IGS files or solids or surface models in the cloud and open them in um, Fusion 360. And this can be done again in the data panel. And here you have an upload button and then a window pops up that lets you choose your local files. Then you load them up directly into the cloud and you can then open them in Fusion 360. Before I end this video, let's take another brief look at the toolbar. And uh, everything you can see here can be also found in the drop down menu. And when you hover over a function or a tool and move the cursor to the right, this little menu pops up. And when you click it, you can pin the uh, feature or the tool to the toolbar. And when I do this, the toolbar gets extended to the right. And you can do this for every tool inside the drop-down menu. And there's also another option um, that is called pin to shortcuts. And when you click this one, nothing happens. But when I now press the S key by hovering the mouse somewhere over the canvas, the design shortcut pops up. And as you can see, I have also my box tool available here. So I do not have to go up to the um, toolbar or to the drop down menu in the toolbar all the time. I can pin the tools to the design shortcut menu and I can also search for the tools in it. So if I type in box, for instance, I can select between a solid box or a freeform box here and then uh, directly draw these elements uh, to the canvas. And last but not least, let's see how to assign shortcut keys. And this also works very straightforward. And I go down to the box tool again, click on the little menu and select change keyboard shortcut. Uh, and here I can simply assign different key combinations. So let me try to select letter B and it looks like it's not assigned to anything else yet. And when I click OK and hit the letter B, I can start drawing a box on top of our existing box. And the great thing about these shortcut keys is they get also stored in the cloud. So as I've already mentioned before, when you um, start Fusion 360 on another workstation and log in to your account, your shortcut keys and your settings will be available. All right, so that's it regarding the interface, at least for the moment, and not because there wouldn't be much more to talk about the interface, but simply because that's all I'm aware of right now. As you know, I have started learning Fusion 360 two days ago, so please take everything I share with you here with a grain of salt, and at the same time, I would like to encourage you to use the comment section below and uh, point out some important functions or important workflows that I'm not aware of and share your knowledge with me. So we can together turn the comment section in a resource base for future viewers. In the next video, I will talk about navigation because we have to clear a few things up when it comes to navigation in Fusion 360. And I promise you that I will get rid of these boring gray boxes and use a more exciting and a more complex model instead. So that's it for this video. Write a comment, thumbs up if you like the content and see you in the next one.